All right, here we are, another week around the trash fire. Your host, Matthias, along with the boy. John. Just one boy today. Yes. We got the rare lucky fish, Travis, to come on that one time, and still no word from Will. Well, I haven't heard anything from Will. Oh, he's coming back from uh, his vacation, so we're just that. Lucky man on vacation. <laughs> Wish I could have that. <laughs> but here we are. A late episode, which is here we are. A okay. It's fine. It just means there's more stuff that we could talk about. Not too much, but there is uh, stuff. So let's just jump into it, shall we? Yes. With the uh first thing being the uh the coin reveal. Obviously, we're late. We're already like 10 days into August, but uh, yeah. Here we are. We got a Grey Knight coin. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I actually like this coin. Yeah, it's one of those things like it's just it's a iconic design, but it's not like overtly weird. Um, I like it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and I, I actually managed to get one of these. Oh, nice. Two of them, but that wasn't intentional. That's just GW's prices. There you go. What do you pick up? Uh, T Sun, T Sun book. Uh, I mean, sorry, the T Sun book, some dice, and two units of Incubi. Nice, nice, nice. I know it's a it's a weird mix, but don't need too much for my T Sun army, because right. I don't know too much about them yet. Right, we got the book, which is the important bit. True. I probably didn't really need it, but I think this edition going forward, I'm looking more towards just Black Templars, Thousand Suns, and Dark Eldar. So I feel like we're going to be in ninth edition a bit longer than uh than previous editions. Which is a good thing. Yeah, it's it's fine. It'll be like good old uh I'm trying to think what was the long edition. Six and seventh, six and seventh was pretty long. Seventh was pretty long, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, unfortunately, seventh was the worst edition in my opinion, but yes, I agree. Well, actually, I think six was edges that out just because I think seventh or six had a lot of so seventh had a lot of concepts that were started in six, like flyers, but they were just kind of and like lords of war in normal games. And they were very unrefined. Um, like Taladar was big in sixth edition. The ally system, you know, introduced in sixth edition, incredibly broken. Flyers introduced that edition, incredibly broken. Wraith Knights, Riptides, even Bane Blades and all that introduced in that edition. Kinda crazy for, for normal games. So I I think I will go with sixth edition as the, the worst edition of 40k. Uh I I thought I got magnified in seventh edition, but <clears throat> That's a debate for another time. Yes. We can, we can debate about that when we get to Hobby Rant section on a day where we don't have too much news. But yeah, the coin looks good. I already have them. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the coins, to be honest, but I did like this one, so I did pick one up. But uh, moving on from this... We got our Sunday preview, which uh, uh, surprised me a little bit because I was expecting uh, Kill Teams to be another week until they did the pre-orders. But here we are. We got the uh, the new Kill Team Indeed box ready, ready for pre-order this week. So... Uh, not much to say about it, obviously. Uh, what did we say? It was $180? So actually, the, the prices were leaked today. This is $199. So we actually said it was $210. Because I think one of us compared it to Warcry, the Catacombs, which was $210. Right. So um, we're $10 under, which is good. <laughs> Yay, we lowballed. We lowballed, but if you're in, if you're in a high-tax state like us, it's, you know, it's... Yeah, that's true. We we probably nailed it right on the money. <laughs> um, now now to break it down, let's see. Orc commandos are probably fifty. 
Deathcore, probably fifty. That's probably way more expensive. Like catacombs, because you know everything here's a multi kit, right? Uh, yes, exactly. So we're looking already a hundred bucks at the, you know, at the, the the models. The terrain's probably what like sixty to eighty, probably eighty bucks. That's a lot of terrain. That's more than than an average box, you know. Right. So you're kind of getting the rule book for free essentially, in this box, which is you know pretty worth it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as a starter set to kill team. I mean, with the reviews coming up and, uh, you know, YouTube opening, uh, sorry, YouTube unboxings and, and the, uh, you know, the different sites reviewing the rules. I say this is a pretty damn good starter set if you just want to play kill team or if you don't get into kill team or just play kill team. You got two full teams with options. You got uh, a campaign system. Now, something I want to point out, because, you know, we're just talking about kill team and this being a pre order is that the 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 commandos and the i mean they pointed this out before that these two teams were made for kill team and really the the rules really reflect that that you know there's lots of there's lots of options for your dudes both for the guardsmen and for the orcs and i could really see them releasing more units in this vein like again, resculpts of of units that don't require codex release, like Space Marine Scouts, like Crude Warriors. You know, maybe some Eldar Aspect Warriors, like Striking Scorpions, for instance. Well, I mean, they should definitely go down the kill team route. I mean, not kill team route. Uh, Warcry route, right? Where they just have a bunch of boxes that are just for this. Well, I mean, or that's, the that's, design that's, specifically. Yeah. Uh. You can probably get away with a lot of specialized units. Obviously, what comes to mind is guard, right? You got all the different right. stuff that would be easy to do, right? With all the platoons out there, um, I'm trying to think of who else could be out there. Obviously, space marines. Uh, uh, anyone else coming to mind? Chaos, I guess. Um, yeah, Space Marines. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe Chosen. That'd be cool. Like a five-man box of Chosen. But their their codex isn't out yet, so you know, can't really see them getting a resculpt just yet. Um, but I mean, the but, point is, you know, get stuff like that instead of uh, exactly what they did in the past, which was put a little sticker on a on a box and say, yeah, these are these are kill team. Yeah, I mean now, like you could still do that, right? Which I think is a strength of of New War Cry and you know this edition of Kill Team, where you could just you still have those options of putting sticker on a box, but you also have your specialized teams, which I think make will make for a, a better experience overall. So I think it's a win win. Um, I mean, if it wasn't obvious already, I'm pretty hyped about this. I'm gonna try to get two boxes if I can. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. Hmm. Two boxes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I am, you know, when they first got released, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get this. And now I'm kind of on the fence if I really want to get this. I mean, if you, you know, you already have a lot of orcs. It's not like you're playing, you know, Death Core anytime soon. You could always just get the book and the rule book and the, and the compendium, you know? And then you'd be good to go for Kill Team. Right, right, right. It's not... Yeah. It's not that I don't want it. It's just like I look at my hobby corner of shame and I'm like, do I really want to add to this right now? Right, it is a lot. It's 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 one of those things that, you know, me and Will keep ever since what was it, Malign no, Malign Sorcery. Um one of those expansions where, you know, it's great if you want everything here and you get it at a good discount. But you have to want everything and you have to be able you have to be hyped for everything to work on it now because it is a lot of stuff, but you're right, you know. It's a lot of like, I think for me, you know, um, my buddy's going to be working on the terrain because he loves working on terrain, and I'm just going to be work focusing on the commandos. I think the the Death Corps are going to be in the back burner. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll trade them for some other stuff from, from some of my friends. But, yeah, I'm I'm mainly getting, because, you know, I'm hyper kill team, and I really want those commandos for my orc army. Yeah. But it is good that this is coming out, and I believe that's pretty much it for this Sunday yeah. preview, other than... The books, uh, which... yeah, books is gonna. You could buy the uh, 
the the token separately, which is, I think that's kind of neat. You know, why not, right? You know, sell it separately. You know. Yeah. Um, you got the the, the, dice. the dice are incredibly okay. I mean, if they were like twenty bucks, then yeah, that's cool. But they're probably gonna be thirty bucks, and that's kind of overpriced for the just in my opinion for this kind of design. Mm. Um. Yeah, it's not, you know, a must buy kind of thing, unless yeah. you're really hyped for it. Uh, right. But I will, I will be on the fence. Yeah, Even though but... I was super hyped for this, I do like that they are selling the kill zone essentials separately. That's nice. Yeah, and you have, again the rule book and the compendium. Um, and again, if you already have, if you already have everything you need to play 40k, which is you know dice, tape measure, armies, terrain. Well, this doesn't use tape measures. Yeah, you don't have to use tape measures. Yours, that's right. He's the, the new thingy. Um, but yeah, you just get the core book and the compendium, and you're kind of good to go for some squad on squad action. Well, that's what I've always liked about Kill Team. Well, you know, these the small scrimmage games is that you just need a box and you can play. Yeah, but I you like I oh, like how ahead. Kill Team is now making it more personal because I do like when they make exclusive models for this game. Right, yeah. Uh, example: Warcry with the all those chaos war bands out there. Right, like it's cool. I like it. No, I will say that something Warcry is lacking in that department um, is that those war bands are kind of garbage for AOS. I'm just sneeze a bit and make myself. <clears throat> well, I mean, um, they're not supposed does... to be like, you know character destroyers or anything they're just supposed to be out there competing against one another in a little small right, combat right. they're not a something you auto include in your army i guess it's the difference between like made for war cry and made for kill team in mind i think the difference is you know like again like those war cry war bands they're made for war cry and they're just kind of there in aos while as these commandos and guardsmen are incredibly useful if you want them for 40k and I think it's a good best of both. Like, I think it's an everyone wins kind of situation. Um, again, like in Warcry, where it's it's kind of not worth it to get the warbands for just AOS. You really kind of want them for Warcry, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, not for, again for Warcry, they're amazing, right? But I think um, my my point being that with Kill Team, with the Guardsmen and the Commandos, they they hit the nail on the head on something that's really good for both systems. Again, I am hyped for it. It's just I don't think I'm gonna personally pick it up. Yeah, to totally understandable. But I, I will be playing games with you of Kill Team for sure. <laughs> now yeah. that my my schedule's clearing up. Yeah, it's good to hear. But uh, <laughs> since we're not talking about any more things on preview, right? We're done. Yeah, we we can move on. I mean, we'll probably chat more about Kill Team later. Now that you know, there's a lot of rules reviews and all that. Um, side note on this pre-order thing, this like. <laughs> the German version of this Gaunt's Ghost novel just looks like a World War II book. It's kind of funny. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're not done talking about uh, Kill Team just yet. Because they did release news about pre-ordering Kill Team. And how everyone's gonna get a box. Guaranteed. What do you think? You think this is gonna be like a made-to-order kind of thing? Or... Oh. I'm the way I'm reading it is that it's not a complete redesign of how they're going to do pre-orders. It's kind of like you have your initial wave. So if you want the box, you should get it soon because essentially what they're promising is that if you, you know, it's not going to sell out on the weekend, right? They say if you pre-order it during pre-order weekend, whatever that means, you know, is it just this weekend? You know, because it is a two-week pre-order. You know, the box isn't coming out next, isn't coming out. Yeah, next weekend. It's coming out two weekends from now. Right. Um, if you pre-order it on the quote-unquote pre-order weekend, you are guaranteed a box. Now, um, they did say that if you pre, if you're, if you pre, you know, if if quote-unquote supplies run out, you know, you, you're gonna get yours in a few months. So essentially, they're doing a made-to-order. Um, so what this means, how I see it, and how you know our listeners should see it, is that if you want this box ASAP. You know, if you're hyped for it, get it. You know, just pretend that it's gonna sell out, and pretend you know, it's a limited it. order. 
yeah, just pretend like that because essentially it's going to act like that. It's going to have that limited selection where, you know, but instead of just being sold out, right, and you can't buy it, they'll they'll still let you purchase some, but they'll just make it for you. So you are guaranteed a copy, you know, with the downside being you'll get it a few months from now as the productions catch up to your orders. Um, so again, if you want this box, get it as soon as, you know, just buy it as if it's going to, like the Beast Nagas box, it's going to run out. Um, and there's an extra incentive. You get this kind of cool metallic, is it metallic? Um uh oh blah. Yeah, yeah metal combat got gauge yep um i, mean, I think it's kind of cool that they're at least you know prom letting people um excuse me letting people get a copy even though they don't you know wake up at 10 a.m and get it or stay in the queue and all that i think that's pretty cool um but it's it's still the FOMO. Like, I'm getting it ASAP because the FOMO is there. I don't want to wait, like, three months. You know, I want this box now, right? Especially with the orcs coming out. I really want those commandos. And I'm trying to, uh... Well, actually, no, I, 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 I was, like, trying to negotiate with my friend buying the commandos off him, but I'm getting two boxes because, you know, we're trying to build an orc table. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I'm getting it as soon as possible because I don't want to... I don't want to wait three months kind of thing. Well, yeah, I just see it as, you know, they finally took my advice and just made their big weekend made to order stuff you know that's how i see it obviously um, just because, I'll go because now now that everyone's guaranteed a box there's no point in scalping other than you know selling it when they do run out of stock for yeah those, for those who couldn't get it on the pre-order weekend right now with that said if you're planning on getting this box and let's say for some reason you know you don't like the Kriegers, you just want the rest, you know, you're probably going to easily sell those Kriegers for like 60 bucks. You know, someone's going to want that. So there, I think there will be slight scalping going on for, again, the FOMO. Um, oh, there's going to be scalping but, going on just for just to get the entire army to be Krieg, right? Plastic. Absolutely. Yep. Um, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as like the Beast Nagas box, which I think is like, Three, four, no, five, six hundred bucks on eBay, which is crazy. I haven't gotten my copy yet. Anyway, um, it's, it hasn't been shipped yet, but yeah, at least they're doing a made-to-order thing, which that's great. I mean, even the Beast Nagus box, man, like the only thing that's really limited there is the Codex, because with the Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol being, you know, the contents of the Combat Patrol was a limited edition Sisters launch box. I can see Beast Nagus coming as a Combat Patrol. Would just do just that stuff, so you know we're gonna get it eventually. Of course, but, but yeah. Um, bottom point: if you want this now, pretend like it's gonna sell out forever, and you know, hopefully, you will get your copy. Um, I'm I'm probably gonna get on queue at like nine twenty or something. Maybe at nine. I mean, I wake up early on the weekends anyway, so. Yeah, I would say if you. I agree with John. If you want to grab it, grab it immediately. Don't wait, otherwise you'll get screwed by either scalpers or GW taking their time to re-release this game. Right. Um, now, they did mention in this article as well, two bits of information, is that they might use this method in the future. Uh, I um, think they should, but... Yeah. Um. So, blah, blah, blah... We're looking at ways we can make sure you don't miss out. Yep, so it's implying they're going to use this method. And they kind of hint at a new Black Templars box coming out. So, Well, um, I, I think I want to talk about that last. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that last. Yes. But yes, it does mention that in the article. Well, uh, well, we can move on to something important to me, I guess. Well, the next few stories are pretty important to me. Uh, we got some T-Sun rules. Obviously, they're coming out in, like, four days when this when this video gets posted. So, uh, T-Suns, Kabbalistic Rituals. They're getting a new, a new system implemented into their, uh, their gameplay. Which, uh, I think will be good. Because, you know, you need something to have the field full of uh, dusty boys instead of souping your army. 
Uh, so did you read too much into this? I did actually. Um, and I, I have a few comments, you know, I think addressing stuff like this in the grand scheme of Warm 40,000, you know, and I'm going to be playing 40k again soon because of orcs, but it's, you know, it does make Thousand Suns more unique, right? It's a new cool system and it seems to be pretty strong. Um, I don't know if it's going to be OP or not. But you know, it's it's it, it gets it gets it's more buffs, right? You know, your army gets more abilities that so helps them win, um, which is great. I think that's good. Um, I'm back, and we're back in the days where the only armies with special rules were you know Space Marines back in like fifth edition. So it's cool to see other armies have an advantage for you know not souping, right? But on the other hand, it's another layer of rules in an already rules dense game. Like Thousand Suns have already like two psychic trees, you know, you have your cults and now you got your cabal point system. So yeah, it's more rules. And you know, you know me, I've I've been you know, if you know me in real life, talking about war gaming, I always make fun of 40k as being incredibly encyclopedic at this point. Well, but... that's unfortunately when uh 40k gets rebooted, as I like to put it. That's when, you know. The new edition comes out and everyone just gets an index. Uh, you know, the game is super simple. But it's when you start introducing the codexes and that's when the complexity starts happening. Right. Um, in terms of Thousand Suns, if I, if I just grade Thousand Suns on their own, they are not a complex army. And that's, that's the sad part. Is that they're not that complex. Sure, they have a lot of spells that they can well actually they don't even have that many spells they can pick from because you know you pick a cabal then you get one spell from there and then you're mainly just spamming smite and then your big casters are the ones with the complex spells other than that it's just like there's nothing really special about them other than their whole army's psychic right and other than that that's you know not too they were they were not good especially when they were one wound models oh my gosh that that's a huge buff just being two and same for great knights i mean i don't think we're gonna talk too much about great knights because we don't play that army but just having two wounds is a huge advantage yeah but i mean you got to remember that most thousand suns armies were just non-existent it was just detachments where they would pick arimon a demon prince and magnus put that into supreme command detachment and then they would soup that in with what other army rubrics scarab terminators were never used uh zangor bomb was a was big until zangors went up two points and then that army was completely uh-huh. unplayable because why spend nine points on a zangor when seven points was just enough right to maybe to maybe kill one titan with the Zangor bomb before right. they would get shot off the board. Um, so, honestly, they need this complexity. I think the Cabal points could be good. Again, I haven't watched any reviews of any Codex reviews right now, so I, I obviously know there's some out there, but I just haven't had the time to look at it. The ones I've seen have positive things to say about it, so which is I think that's good. Yeah, and I mean it's just more incentive to get the uh, the dusty boys on the table, right? right? Because everyone everyone grants you points, so souping is not too much, but I'm sure souping is still gonna exist because Thousand Suns do lack a lot of uh a lot of things that they could use but we have to wait and see oh i will uh, i haven't looked, like i said once i look at the book i'll know for sure right but again um yeah we'll t- we'll see right you're right we'll see right uh, uh but uh, the couple hall system it, will be is, a nice system because it just yeah. gives them more change right and it is more rules again it is more rules which um yeah. Which is good for a, a, an army like Thousand Suns that isn't that crazy. I think you know that that's great, right? Yeah, the Thousand Suns is too too much of a specialist army to 
Yeah. Really? But, uh, no, let me rephrase that. Thousand Sons, which is a specialist army, is really vanilla in terms of what they are. They're, they're basically just, like I said, they're basically regular space marines, you know, before this codex. They're regular space marines that can cast a baby smite. Yeah. Now that they're going up wounds and stuff, they'll be better, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, in terms of other Thousand Sun rules, uh, not surprising. I did call this when we saw the Death Guard changes. Uh, yeah, no more Zangor cultist spam. Yes. Which is not tied to your Marines. Yeah, so just just like Death Guard, you have to take a certain amount of uh, Rubric Marines in order to have X amount of Zangors and Cultists. So, just like the Death Guard, everyone, everyone who plays this army pretty, and Chaos, Space Marines, pretty much saw this coming after the Death Guard got revealed with this, so. Uh, not too big of a worry for me, because I do have a Death, Bar, Death Star of uh, Rupert Marines and Terminators, so I'm a okay. Um, there was something else in here. Uh, that was pretty broken. Kind of, depending on how you look at it. Uh, no morale test for the Thousand Sons whatsoever. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I know morale is a joke. <laughs> Cause uh, I I have experimented a bit with my Dark Eldar. With the, uh, you know, lowering everyone's leadership and having them run and all that other stuff. But, yeah, it's it's painful. It doesn't really work that well. Especially yeah, against Space Marines. Right. But, uh, still, this is huge. Uh, this does encourage Death Stars a little bit. I mean, you still have to worry about Blast and all that. But... You can run a 20-man Rupert Marine and not worry about any of them running off the table as you slowly march your way across the board. Right, which is good. So, yeah, that's good. Uh, all is dust uh, seems to be the same. Still one damage weapons. You get plus one to your save. And move and fire heavy weapons with no penalty. And I believe that was... It, uh, the Soul Reaper Cannon went up a strength, which is good. Went from, or not a strength, it went up a, a, a bullet, heavy five instead of heavy four. And the melee weapon, I think, hold on, is this the power sword? Yeah, it's, it's more than just a power sword now. You know, it's plus one, minus three, two damage. Yeah. Wait, is power sword normal to damage? I can't remember. No, it's one damage. It's just uh, plus one. They, they, they buffed it to plus one strength. Um, so I think that's that's pretty good. But it's always been one damage, right? So this got buffed to two damage. Correct. Okay. So yeah, so now the power swords, all your terminators with power swords finally uh, being able to do damage instead of crying as they hit two <laughs> wound space marines. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, that is that. Uh, I don't really want to go into the stratagems. Not yet. But uh, I am excited with some of these changes. I will be more excited when I can see the full book. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it so far. Yeah, it looks cool. Definitely looks cool. Yep, well... Uh, I know... It's Tuesday, but we do have we did have a new model Monday. Indeed. And uh Oh my god. There he is. The Emperor's Champion, Black Templars. It, you want uh who, who gives the first hot take? Uh let me get to the comparison. Okay. Was there not a I thought there was a comparison. It's in the bottom. It doesn't use. It just uses the silhouette. Oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. Uh, 
Go ahead, give your first hot take. Uh, when I saw this model, I thought it was kind of a joke. It was like, that's it. Like, it looks like a conversion. Um, but then, like, as, you know, the day went by, um, like, like the tapper and the, the, the purity seals look kind of weird. But as the day went by, the more I looked at it, I'm like, this is damn cool. It also helps that I'm listening to, uh, to Hell's Reach right now on, on Audible, which is Black Templars versus Orcs. Mm. And yeah, the more I stare at this one, I'm like, wow, this is, like, I don't play this army, but, like, I, I would want this in my, on my desktop, you know, just painted up. It's, and it's, again, especially listening to Hell's Reach, like, Black Templars, honestly, thematically, Black Templars are probably the most um, accurate Space Marines in terms of what people think Space Marines are. Um, even though, like, Ultramarines are the poster boys, Ultramarines feel like they're not really like, I mean, yeah, they're super, sword, they're super soldiers, but they're also kind of like diplomats, administrators, you know, by the book kind of people. Uh, Black Templars are just war, super soldier warrior monks turned up to 11. Like, like there's a scene in Hell's Reach, I don't know if you remember this, but like Grimaldus is just looking at, he's like looking at Excel spreadsheets for like nine days because he's a space marine. And he's like, what, what am I doing? Like, I should be fighting, you know? Um. <laughs> And just that book just characterizes Black Templars as like this is what Space Marines are. I'm just I'm here to like destroy the enemies of mankind, and that's all I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do it happily. And this guy exemplifies that kind of like yeah, I'm a warrior monk with a giant sword. Fight me. So, I'm I'm loving this model now. As of today, I am loving this model. Um, all right. Well, my hot take. I like it. I know. Online, it was getting a little bit of flack with its uh, its tabard. I don't know why. Guess it guess it's too long, and people yeah. are just people are just memeing on it. But other than that, it's fine. I do miss the the old model. I'll scroll down to it over here. I like how the sword was bigger than him. I thought that was <laughs> funny. Uh, but we're losing that. I mean, my, my thoughts on Space Marines are always, you know, they're they're meh. I like Black Templars because, you know, as John says, they are what people think Space Marines are, and that's what I like about them. You know, they're just fueled by hatred. Nothing is good for them except for pleasing the Emperor. That's it. By killing his enemies. By killing anything, Excellent. anything that's not human. Yep. And I'm like, I like it. You know, I'm just... Have you read Hell's of Reach? I have novel? not. Dude, that, that, is, that is an amazing book, especially for Black Templars. It, it just characterizes them really well. I have heard. I it, it is ADB, so Talon of Horus guy. Um, but <laughs> yeah, like they really, I really want to point out these guys exemplify what people think when they think Space Marine, you know, because people think like Master Chief is a super soldier or like Starcraft, well, they're not super soldiers, but they're power armor dudes, but. Like, Master Chief, you know, he he's kind of like a dude. Like, he has, you know, hopes and dreams. Like, he has some sad moments because, you know, he, he loses Cortana, which is his friend, right? But, like, like Black Templars are just like, I'm, I'm going to destroy these orcs, you know? And, like, there's this scene where, like, this Titan, this, this Titan gets ambushed, so the Titan gets damaged. And, like, Grimaldus is just, like, like, like giving so much shade to like the princeps like like how can you let this happen you, you're terrible like and he just he saves the princeps and the titan and he's just like like i thought you were i thought you guys are like you know powerful war like you guys are god machines like and he, there's just so much contempt for like not kicking ass from from these guys and it's like yeah that's kind of what space marines are you know they're they're there to kill the enemies of the imperium and they expect you know in a war zone everyone else to do the same and I'm just I'm I'm not gonna start a Black Templar's army, but damn, this model is just super hype. I hope he's coming out on his own and not in a giant box set, because I don't need another giant box set just to pick this guy up. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention this with the thousand sun stuff. Uh, I am disappointed that uh, the Infernal Master it will probably be tied to that box for a while, so I'm a little sad that I won't be getting him anytime soon. Yeah, and I hope hope this guy doesn't suffer the same fate, but he might. Well, 
you did allude to it earlier that uh, Black Templars would be getting a box. So I 100% I believe they will be getting a box. Probably, speculation here, probably a two-player box set. Similar to Hexfire. Mm, I'm, I'm going to one-up on that one. I don't think it's going to be a two-player box set. I think it's going to be a Beast Nagas box with all new models. Oh, man, I can't, I can't afford that. <laughs> Come on now. I hope not. Uh, but it would be cool to have. I'll have to replace all my Black Templars that I have now, but... You know, it'd be cool I... to finally get some new neophytes, some actual Black Templars with tabards and stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, I don't think it's going to have, like, like Black Templar intercessors I, or replacement. I think it's going to be, like, all special units. Maybe, like, just go ham and have Grimaldos and Helldirect as primaries. <laughs> just, you know, screw everything. Just redo the entire range. Well, I mean, the special characters definitely need new models to get out of fine cast. Uh, yes, very true. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think Hellbrook would be Primaris. Grimaldus maybe, but I know Hellbrook is like super old, right? Like lore wise, so don't think he'd survive the procedure. Yeah, I mean the only chapter master who is Primaris, I believe, is is Kalgar, because right. the other dudes are are not, oh sorry, Shrike, Kalgar and Shrike. Right. But uh, I could see Grimaldus possibly being Primaris. Gosh, that'd be so cool. But yeah, I am excited. I am looking forward to this range, and hopefully uh, they don't screw it up. They, they don't might. Break uh, my, don't break my heart. They might reveal it on Friday. I don't know. I think we missed this, but on the Sunday preview, it said that they're going to have a Codex roadmap on Friday. Ah, Jumping ahead of me, but yes, we can talk about that now. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's get, let's get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, so there are talks of a uh, of a codex roadmap. I am I'm scared <laughs> because the last time they did this, we waited like six. No, well, that that's not technically true. We waited like four or five months to get the codexes that <laughs> should have been out. Uh, it makes me wonder if they're going to finally put it into overdrive and start releasing two codexes a month again. Well, like with, uh, with Grey Knights and Thousand Suns? Well, I mean, with Grey Knights and Thousand Suns, again, you can argue this. Uh, those are really relatively small codexes. Mm -hmm. So there's not too much to do with them. And really, it's just updating their... Uh, uh, I'm blanking on the uh, the book. The, the the little supplement books that they had. Oh, the Caradon thing? Is no, that not, what not, not Caradon. The 8th uh, edition uh, campaign books. Oh, Psychic Awakening. No, well, that's... Was early, the, the was it was it still Psychic Awakening? It was Vigilus and Psychic Awakening. Okay, yeah. So yeah, they just need to put the Psychic Awakening stuff in there for the Thousand Suns at least, and then you know Grey Knights are getting brand new stuff. But relatively, those are small codexes, so I could definitely see those getting released on the same day, honestly, which they're doing. Right. Uh. But I remember when I got back into Hobby 8th Edition, I mean, there's like a new codex every other week. So you were getting at least, depending on AOS schedule, you were getting two Warhammer 40k codexes a month. Right, which is a lot. That's a lot. So I wonder if they will be trying to shoot for that. I mean, I know when they originally announced their world map, that's what their plan was. Two codexes a month, but obviously, the world got screwed over. I think they might. They have incentive of doing that too because of the the U.S. tournaments, the the U.S. Opens. You know, they want those dexes out, codexes out, just so like there's the perception that you know it's a more balanced playing field. 
um because they are pushing the competitive scene so yeah well like it's i like i said last podcast you know it's kind of unacceptable that they haven't just released this stuff digitally <laughs> so those books man people want those books but people are gonna get mad well it's fine right they could have always sold the books you know uh online but the digital as soon as it was done they could have just made a digital copy and then just had all that stuff readily available right right so i mean the pushback never made any sense to me I'm, I'm sure there's like a marketing reason like you know time it with this mobile release kind of thing but yeah like if if because i think for you matt which is it's a fair view that your interest lies in like making sure the game is in an equal playing field um and it would make sense for the like, codexes to be dropped simultaneously you know companies like like privateer press used to do that when you know they would release a book it would have something for every army just so it's a balanced playing field but gw you know I don't, that's not their priority so it's like well yeah he got he got to wait you know um, yeah, but so I like I said I am worried because yeah I mean they've screwed up already and I'm gonna I'm gonna say a group of people I don't know how big would be really small but I a lot of people that I watch at least you know not very happy with GW. Uh, GW so far, and that's on all fronts, not just the recent uh, Warhammer Plus stuff. I mean, this is on releases, this is on models. Right. So, you know, GW has been fumbling a lot this year. So I, I worry. I worry if they make another promise like this, if they can keep to it. Right. We We will see. We will see. Um, yep, yep. I mean, I'm happy because Kill Team's coming up, <laughs> and I'm just, that's what I'm hyped for. Um, you know, 30k, you know, getting that mysterious box set in, in the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Orcs are coming out. Like, I know Orcs is happening eventually, so. Eventually. In this year, because, you know, they previewed all that, all that junk, all that o cool junk. October. Or, yeah. Oh my god, if they actually, that, that, that would, that would, that would prove to me that someone's paying attention. They actually did October. I mean. I'd rather not, because October is like three months from now. I want it now, you know. But true, true. But there's still still the like AOS stuff still needs to come out. Um, like the Stormcast and Cruel Boys. That's at least another three weeks, probably three or four weeks of releases for them, unless they unless they rapid fire do two weeks of releases for like a million models and dragons kind of thing. But you know, we'll see. Yeah, well, I do want to talk about this because you did briefly mention it. Uh, let me pull it up here. I didn't, I didn't post it in the news section, so you might have to pull it up yourself. But uh, it is their uh event this weekend that they're gonna be uh live streaming over. Oh, it's the U.S. Open, right? Yeah. I know we talked about this. There was some concerns due to the uh you know a vir virus and stuff, but uh yeah, here they are. They're actually gonna go through with it. With the first one uh, this weekend in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I'm excited. I'm glad uh, GW, after so many years, is finally holding events and mentioned that they are going to Gen Con. Yes, they are. Uh, they're finally, they're finally getting out of their little shells. It's great. Uh. But yeah, it's cool. Uh, they also announced that uh, they're going to be engraving the winner's name on a plate for when they do these events and hang it up around their around their tournament. So uh, cool stuff. I already have my problems with uh, the GW tournaments, so I don't think I'd ever be in one of them because I don't want to paint my army. Uh, a certain way and then have to play as that certain army as we discussed a long time ago but yeah i am glad that they are you know branching out more now instead of being so secluded uh and i i guess i was wrong 
because I also said that uh, when we talked about the Warhammer Plus about these events and you get like little goodies, I guess you're not getting anything for having Warhammer Plus other than getting to watch this for free or something like that. So that's a oh. little disappointing. Uh, I think I think that's just a special thing. I don't think it's tied to Warhammer Plus because you know it's not even out yet. Um, well, uh, well, this but they could be out of the future. This one is not going to be Warhammer Plus, but the rest will will be right right they they could you know do that which would be annoying uh well it's just it's just sad because you know obviously so someone like me i would never travel to florida and it's nothing against florida but i mean they're crazy down there but i don't want to like go on a plane with my miniatures and right fly all the way down there i go to vegas because you know that's like a six six hour drive but i'm not gonna go on an airplane put my models through that that hell right um let's see but yeah i, I was hoping i'd get something if i was a warhammer plus person like they they mail me up one of these special event models here uh if i can get down to it which um so they're giving us the Necron Overlord, which you could have pre-ordered uh, two or three weeks ago. I can't remember exactly. Yes. And uh, this uh, Chaos Warrior. Yes. Uh, which you, which was not available for pre-order. So this one's this one is actually new. Yeah, that's gonna. Oh, uh, yeah, that one. Uh, I I have that model. He got it from the, uh, from the LA store opening. So, you could, you know, it's another chance to get that model. But yeah, you're right. You cannot pre-order it. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, a little little mail, one of these guys over to you would have been cool for the, for the Warhammer Plus. But right. It, it's just something to think about. But yeah. Uh, the, so these are the event models that you're gonna get if you go to these, go to this event. But other than that, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it in terms of Warhammer news. I don't got anything else really. Yeah, I mean, you know, kill team hype. Gonna pre-order, <laughs> uh, and we'll we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, uh, I do want to talk about one other thing. One thing that's been uh swimming around the YouTube sphere around along uh many creators which uh I don't know if you've heard about this. I don't think it's true at all, but they're like GW is pulling out of the uh the tabletop market and going to go more strictly to toys. No. N not 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 immediately like, you know, there's slowly transitioning from the tabletop to toys and no. I, I look at these videos and i'm like why why would it, why would gw do anything like that but uh let me get let me get your take what do you think of this i think it's dumb it's like saying marvel's gonna stop making comics because of the movies like yeah the movies are making a bajillion dollars compared to the comics but they're still making comics you know um like games workshop Games Workshop's mission statement, right? The reason why they exist, you know, it, you know, if only most people had like conviction this strong is to make the best fantasy and sci-fi miniatures forever. End quote. Like that. That's what their mission statement is, and there's like that's why they exist as a company, right? I mean, yeah, they're they're here to make money, but um, speaking to GW employees, like. Like most of GW's revenue goes to making more models, making better models, opening new stores, and making better models. Oh, did I mention making better models? Like, like all, all those, all those. Um, I mean, I don't have a direct source for this, but like, I got all from what I've heard, all those, you know, all that, all that shares, you know, Games Workshop made X money, you know, millions of billions of pounds, you know, like. That revenue does like it's not like a, a a Jeff Bezos situation where or like an Elon well, whatever like you know corporate 
CEOs aside, you know, it's not that that the the that money goes into the CEO's pocket. In fact, like Kevin Roundtree, um, you could look up his salary compared to like how much GW makes in revenue. He doesn't pay get he doesn't get paid that much compared to other CEOs, and that's because all that profit is funneled into making more premier lieutenants. Exactly, <laughs> and like you know, like. The, the amount of resources GW puts into making better models is insane. And I don't think they're going to restructure their entire industry, you know, the entire company to make toys. So I think that's ridiculous. I'm, I mean, we've been wrong before with a lot of things, but that's one of those things where, like, I, I don't think that will change because that is the core of Games Workshop. It's just making better, crazier models, period. Uh, yeah, I agree with you because uh, I'm like, why would the kings why would the king of tabletop gaming throw that away to go make toys i mean if they were uh if they were a mediocre company then i would understand why they would go make toys but let's be real here i mean warhammer sure it's mainstream but it's not super popular yeah you're not seeing movies on the big screen being made about Warhammer. Uh, so they definitely can't do anything like that. And their toy line is very limited. Sure, they're ju they just started their toy line, but even then they couldn't sell that many to risk going into the toy business. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't, I see these arguments and I'm just like, ah, yeah, I doubt it. I doubt they're going to be abandoning the one thing that makes them money to go do a risky investment into toys. Right. I could go up to any little kid that I know on, they'll have no idea what a, a space marine is if I showed them it. Right, because it's not popular. There's no cart. It's not like the '80s and '70s where, uh, you know, Transformers was made just to sell toys. Right. It's to sell miniatures. Like those toys are made to sell miniatures. Those toys are like, so you know, a dad who you know loves Warhammer can, you know, introduce the thing to his son or daughter and be like, you know, when you're old enough, we're gonna get the models. So you now you're familiar with Space Marines, like. That that's it, like period, you know. Right. Well, I thought I'd just bring that up because it was, I don't know how many videos in my YouTube feed were just filled with GW moving, pulling away from the tabletop and moving to toys. I was just like, I mean, I, this is I, a bold claim. Until those toys are made like by GW, you know, on site, then okay some credence but th they're outsourced you know that's, that's like saying i mean people were saying when dawn of war first came out oh, is gonna start making you know gonna give up of tabletop and make video games no like they, those exist to sell the games period yeah it's just glorified advertisement yeah exactly yeah well i i i stick with the gw will be there i i think it's just more angry i think it's just more people who are just really angry with GW's policies that have been going around and just how their their sales system pretty much this year, you know? Now, again, like, it's... Like, I, I think it's it's IP protection, you know? Like, I you know, you know uh, moving on to that conversation, I I think to better understand the IP situation, um, I had to stop thinking that, you know, I'm a content creator, and GW is trying to, to kill me because I'm eating revenue. No, like, don't think like that. Think, imagine you're GW and you're trying to make sure Disney doesn't steal your IP. Then everything they do makes sense. Because <laughs> if GW lets their IP run, like, here's the example I, I kind of kind of came up with. And copyright lawyers, feel free to, to correct me. But if Astartes, for example, right, you know, monetized and, you know, people would pay to see Astartes, and GW did nothing. According to copyright law, you know, if GW does nothing, someone's making money off of the IP, they lose that right. Now, now the Astartes guy has the rights to GW IP. 
right? Because uh, Games Workshop isn't doing anything to protect it. And that's how IP law works. If you don't protect your IP, you lose it because someone else is making money. And, you know, making money out of something is tied to property rights. So, a start, this guy owns, you know, 40, has rights to 40K. So now right. Disney offers Astartes guy 100K for the rights to Astartes. Bam. G now Disney has a stake in GWIP. That's why Kim's Workshop is being super anal about that stuff. And again, is it, does it, you know, does it stifle creativity from the fan base? Yeah, of course, you know. Um, it is kind of odd that if you look at their copyright, um, like, mandate on their website, it says that fan art is okay, 100%, as long as you don't make money from it. However, Fan animations are a no-no, regardless. That's kind of weird to me. I don't know why. I I haven't came, I haven't thought of or thought or discovered or like came up with a good reason, based on you know my my limited research on why they would do that. Um, but overall, like you know their their behavior, yeah, that they're, they're trying to protect the copyright again. They don't see these content creators as a threat. It's not that you know, freaking Alpha Busa is stealing money from GW. No, it's not that. It's the fact that they have to protect their IP. And that's a bad example because GW has, has yet to say anything to Alpha Busa, you know, as of today. So it's just, it's IP protection, you know, keeping, keeping Disney out of Warhammer. That's what they're trying to do. Um, that's what I, <laughs> I want. I want to rant about that for a bit. Cause it's, you know, that that's the dominant conversation right now on the internet regarding Warhammer. Um, but yes, there you go. Yeah, I agree with that. Though I would think GW would take Disney's money, unfortunately. Because... No, but again, it's it's if because exactly because GW will not take Disney's money, you know that's why they're trying to prevent other people from taking Disney's money, right? All right, I understand what you're saying. But when Disney does eventually buy Warhammer, I will be scared. <laughs> I will I will be scared for the IP. That'd be a fun day. Yeah. And was there anything else? I think that was it in terms of rumors that I heard or news that was filling up my feed. Right. Uh, any other rants and hobbies you want to go over? <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that's the biggest rant that's, you know, I wanted to, to mention at least because, again, that is the dominant conversation right now on Warhammer. Yeah, I bet. Uh, yeah. How's the hobbying going? Uh, good. I just, you know, working on some more Blood Angels, a lot of details. So what I did is, you know, these Assault Marines are based off the Death Company box, and there's a lot of detail on them. So taking, taking it's been it's been a while, taking a while painting just five guys, and I haven't even done their jump packs or basing yet, but I think I'm going to call in these done, and I'm going to move on to uh, some Dire Wolves, which, you know, I've been painting uh, while doing the, the stream or the podcast. So, yeah, just working on some AOS. Um, I have some kill teams ready. I have a Sisters of Battle kill team. I have a Death Watch kill team. I do want to work on my my Guardsman kill team with the last chance. Ah, uh, not last chance. With Gaunt's Ghosts and some and the New Cadians. But other than that, I mean, a kill team is what's on the horizon in terms of, of gaming hype right now. Cool. Any gaming or just no gaming? Hobbing? Just hobbying. Busy, busy, uh, busy week recently. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been very hot. Yes, it's also been very hot. Well, I finally have some good news. Not that many people care, but Hellions finally came online after Ooh. the day, the day after I complained about uh about it on the podcast. That's funny. Well, you know what's funny is that you know you can't find Hellions anywhere online. Not even like good third-party Hellions. And the Hellions that you can find are like twenty or thirty dollars more expensive than what GW sells. That's funny. Like, what backwards logic is that? Where GW actually has the more reasonable price? People, people are you know running off the the perceived um, what's it called? The perceived FOMO, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I was just shocked. I was like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, insta buy, gotta buy it, buying, buying two, two boxes. Because who knows whenever the hell that box will come back up online, you know? Right, right, right. So I'm glad, I'm glad I finally picked that up. 
uh, I didn't do any gaming because it's been a hundred degrees over yeah. here. Even when I game at night, you know, it's like low nineties, high eighties, because it's just where we live. So haven't been doing too much gaming. Probably gonna game th- tomorrow, since I usually game on Wednesdays. So we'll we'll see what happens. Get a get a good old forty k game in. It's it's funny, cause I need to get as many forty k games in as possible, because LVO is just around the corner. We're already in August. That is true. And in five months will be the LVO. It's crazy how fast uh, this year went. I know, right? And SoCal Open's coming up. Um, I uh, I messaged. So th- there's a SoCal Open 30k group, um, but you know, 30k is a zombie right now. So uh, I messaged, I posted like, "Hey, is this happening?" And you know, apparently they're trying to make it happen, but no use, no news yet. So we'll see. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to. It. I gotta get as many games as impossible. I am most likely gonna jump over to Thousand Suns and play a couple games with them when I get get my book. But yeah, Dark Eldar, all the way so far. Because you know, who doesn't like good old cheese? Of course, of course. It's not cheesy if everyone's cheesy. <laughs> I think Admech is still the most powerful army out there, but. Yeah, no, that is definitely a true statement now. Um, my, uh, I have been corrected there. These, he even post FAQ, man, those are, those guys are, are insane. Eh, I've always had problems against Admic, even back in the old edition. So I think in the right hands, they're still good. Especially with right. all that indirect fire, it's nonsense. <laughs> Can't hide. Hate it. But yeah, um... I don't have anything else left to talk about. Do you? you got anything more? Uh, no, that's kind of it. Um, we'll chat about the... We'll should be back next week. We can chat about the, the Codex releases, see how that plays out. Yeah, we've got plenty to talk about. But uh, we'll call it there. Everyone who stayed to watch, thank you. Sticking to the end. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Later, everyone. Bye-bye.